Greetings once again. So my current teardown is taking a little bit of time. What we're gonna do instead, let's have a, a little in-between teardowns. We're looking at the dollar store camping light. So it's, you know, a flashlight and it's clip hook for, you know, setting on things and convenient clip hook and folding stand. I don't know what the folding stand is yet, but we shall see. But yeah, so, you know, the idea of you either hang it in a tent or set it somewhere or use it as a flashlight. I don't know. We shall find out how exciting it is. If we can open it. Ooh, this looks actually quite exciting. So there is, in fact, a little folding stand. <gasps> so we got a two-way selector switch for probably selecting between wide beam and little dot. So let's go ahead and put some batteries in this. So that pops out. Uh, three double A's. We probably have that. We have four. It's good enough. Ah, it's already on. Hold on. Spoilers! Spoilers! Stop it! Okay. Okay, we're back. So, this is the probably flashlight or general light position. The top one here produces a light as much as you'd expect from a little SMD LED there. And this wide beam, which it looks like there's three regular three and a half millimeter straw hat LEDs underneath. I think. We'll see. We'll see. You know. Uh, just get around light, but it obviously doesn't look very exciting because we have crazy intense studio lighting. Let's turn that off. Now we are lit by a single, two, probably 60 watt incandescent bulb stuck in some sort of little illuminaire on the roof. So this is the lovely, actually I should fix the exposure, but we'll let the auto take over. So it produces a, uh, and this is the wide beam setting, produces a nice, uh, nice light, usable enough. And the top one is, oh, it has a lens. So it gives it a very flashlight appearance, but it's like too flashlighty of an appearance. Let's see if it, yeah, I'm not gonna bother to record it at the moment, but it uh, produces not the greatest beam on the wall, but the, the wide is very nice. So as a camping light, it'll work. Oh yeah, and we got a stand so we can set it there. Oh yes. We'll compare it to our lap stand in a bit. So let's try clipping it to something. Clips just fine. Of course you can no longer see the light. Or what do I have that I can clip it to? There must be a stand somewhere. Ah oh, yes, the helping hands. There we go. It certainly clips to things. What more do you want? Oh, 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 come on. Current review. Knobs... If the... T Okay, I like that you can pick exactly which one you want, but it is a, it's a bit too small, it's just a regular switch, it's a bit too small to get it perfectly off without really paying much attention to it. I don't know how much of a problem that is for most people. The clip feels fine, it's a bit flimsy, what would you, what would you expect? Uh, with the batteries it gets pretty weighty, but the unit itself is extremely light. Uh, I really don't like this flashlight beam, it's, al it's almost useless. Um, I don't know, it's, I guess, if you don't want to hurt your eyes and expose them to much light, it's, it's just a gentle glow, so I guess I could see that as being fair. Uh, the kickstand. Yeah, I think we can uh, take it right off. Okay. But it doesn't break. It does just pop out. Of course, there right, yeah. So, it, uh, oh, actually, without the kickstand, it stands up reasonably well in a flat surface, I don't know, it's muddy terrain or anything. And the kickstand seems to angle it. And, all right, so it's not it's not terrible. Let's do a, a light test. So let's get the uh, exposure locked. Lock the exposure. Lock, there we go. All right, the exposure is locked. So we turn off the lights, it'll suddenly not change the exposure. Not that much, It's this camera's weird. So this is the, the wide beam. See, it changes a little bit, but the exposure is mostly locked. So that's <laughs> that's how much light you're getting out of it versus two. <laughs> Very good question. Versus two. Oh, we used the light to read it. Oh god, this is freaking hot. Dur -dur 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 -dur. Fourteen and a half watt LED bulbs, which is equivalent to a sixty or an eighty watt, probably. 
1500 lumens claimed and that's pretty accurate based on my test so so two 1500 watt oh god yes 1500 watt 1500 lumen bulbs and then the flashlight which is look at that fall off it just goes away so you can see the pattern on it is this it gets a very purple ringy to it but you can see you know versus pretty much first off i can see my hand in real life but the swivel is locked it shows the difference it shows that there is light there but the the wide beam is so much better ah a seizure warning i'd have to give this to someone that actually camps and let them try things out or return to auto exposure yeah. well let's see should we compare it to a flashlight we have my standard favorite flashlight i just accidentally had on hand still hold on there's something in my eye that hurts Hurts so bad. Is a pain I will live with, I guess. Oh, it's mostly gone. We're back! Uh, okay, so we've got my standard favorite dollar store flashlight, which is this useless zoom adjustable. A lot of people probably hate the idea of a zoom in uh, flashlight. I find it fun, and if you're one of those people that don't like it, the lens conveniently unscrews. It probably claims that it's like a two in one flashlight with a a zoom feature. I call it a 3 one because this thing just right unscrews and you're done. You've got a wide beam flashlight. There's no no need to complain. I like the ability to have a pretty focused light sometimes uh, for effects purposey stuff. And the fact that you can zoom in on it makes it work pretty well. It's not crazy bright, but it just works. So that's my standard de facto light. It's nothing special. It's just more convenient to make my own little flashlight because this is a dollar and uh, I don't care. So we shall compare. So is locked. Light is off. So, flashlight mode of the new Campy Light. Hold them roughly the same distance. My favorite little beam thing. Much brighter, but you can see this is wider as in the flashlight mode. But let's take the top off. Ooh, ah. Uh. Okay, so at about the same height, this is actually producing a bit more light, probably. Angle them. That's not really working very well. Go higher. <sighs> the same height roughly the same height tough call do it like this and it's fairly similar light output it's just this is more pleasant because it's just a bare bulb let's stick the lens back on and make it suddenly less useful yeah and then we'll get extremely bright in this very narrow beam so you're calling that one, but I can only assume now that this is going to be much brighter then. Yeah, it's definitely producing quite a bit more light. Yeah, the the three L <laughs> numbers win. <laughs> the camping light is actually pretty bright. Let's compare it to actual. Yeah, so of course the the narrowed in beam wins, but that's that's not very general luminance. So take your pick there. Burp. Exposure's back to auto. I knocked the camera down, but it's fine. So yeah, we'll have to. Real campers can decide, but if I get the chance, I'll ask the the real camper I know. What wonderful thing! All right, so <laughs> right away you can see it's a standard three position switch with the cute little plastic mold stuck on it. It's fine. I guess the teardown begins. We'll remove the batteries and immediately not figure out what to do. Hmm. Remove that. All right, we'll remove the peg. Okay. Try the new teardown tool. Instead of a spudger, use a butter knife. For lack of having a spudger, use a butter knife, I believe, is the proper thing. Now, I'd probably get one that doesn't have the little butter spreading divots on it, little cutting edges or whatever, but when you buy a grab bag of silverware, you use what you get or something. This is not going very fast. Progress has been made. It is snapping. Okay. Oh, that's not what I expected at all. It tricked me. It tricked me. Okay. 
Our lens assembly is several pieces. Got the front, which uses, how they, it is just pegs, isn't it? Ah, there's side, there we go. There's two clips on the side here that grab into the main body. It's pretty good. Molding's not bad. Plastic's just cheap normal, but it's reasonably strong for what it is. The already pre-scratched, that's fine. Little dome here. It looks like a very useful part for building some sort of model. I like it. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, goes right in there. And then you've got the hybrid module that is just... Let's try without the diffuser in a bit. We'll play some combinations in a second. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, it's so strong. You got your standard little diffusy bit, which probably takes away quite a bit of light. Oh yeah, that's a lot of light it reduces. I've got this. Um, well, whatever method they use, it's the standard silvered plastic, which, you know, it goes in there. And then I... <laughs> they tricked me based on the angle. It was not 3.5 millimeter straw head LEDs. It's just these surface mount ones. It's a very smart choice because you just use the same. So you can just tell they've got the po positive. They look that <laughs> as simple as this is. The color coding is correct. The positive from the battery, which is on the red wire, at an unnecessary detail, goes onto the middle position of the switch, and then you're either bridging these two contacts, no contacts, or these two contacts. And so that brings the negative or the positive across the green onto this part, which brings you down your common ground to the negative of the battery. Or if you're on this set down here, Brings the positive across this green wire here, down these, through their commons, so on. They are, what an accurate measuring tool for this. All right, within some margin of error, we will have the LED size. Uh, 2.7 by 3.3. Let's try some other ones here. 2.7 by 3.3 something. There you go. I don't know what else to say about this. Let's see, hackability. Well, since it's not through hole, you'd have to surface mount an LED. It's gonna be kind of dependent upon that pad size there, but let's go ahead and try out some tests of this thing with and without that diffuser. So I'd have it on. We'll grab the light meter app here. All right, we've got the phone set up at an angle. It's not perfect, but we don't care about exact numbers, so don't say this is uh, quoted here on a professional YouTube channel. Four, uh, 440 lux without anything on top of the three LEDs. And now if we put the diffuser there, we get 201, and I'll just take it away. And so with my fingers... Ooh, that felt weird. With my fingers blocking it, that's yeah, still about 420. Yeah, 420, I say, is what we're comparing to. Now let's try with the silver piece and plastic cover. And that's about 400. If I get this angle just about right. Yeah, 420. So the, the diffuser cuts the light by a lot and diffuses it. So up to you if you want to take that out. You know, it loses some prettiness, but you get some right. And the top beam... Without anything, at a very bad angle for measuring, is a hundred. Are we even lined up? Yeah, the camera looks like it's lined up. 160 lux, and if we can just line this up, it now gets 186. So it, you know, a little bit improvement beamed up. And from playing from the same distance, we'll grab our dollar store flashlight. So laying flat on the ground to try to give it its best fair chance. We're getting 460 lux, but without the little cover, we're getting 105. Much dimmer in general. And if we grab the flashlight part of it and bring it down about the same level in distance, 154 versus like yeah so that SMD in general is just brighter in a more wide area 
Another interesting thing to note is that there is no resistor. So they're running these exactly across there. So battery life will affect brightness a bit. I guess we should compare battery types real quick. We'll just grab a good old dead, oh, the exposure is locked. Pretend it's not overexposed. Anyway, a dead AA. We'll pick out two matched voltages here to give us approximately the same level of dead. All right, these are three batteries that are at 1.28 volts. I guess we should compare what our brand new, hopefully, batteries are. Just for reference, these are at 1.54, 1.55 around there. Using our incredibly accurate meter on the side. Let's compare what these different voltages do. Now we could use a test bench, but it's more fun to use the actual battery, battery chemistry because in real life, just because your battery is at 1.2 volts does not mean it's gonna provide the full current there. So we're using actually dead batteries to mimic dead batteries. Whoa, my methodology might be a little bit crazy, but I like it. All right, lights out. So here's the three, which is the, the exciting test. So it's exactly, I should probably mark this. We possess tape. Our brand new, this is brand new as I'm gonna find, a batter, our brand new batteries comes in at 534 lux from this exact measuring position. Well, let's go ahead and get the, we'll get the other one too. And from that exact same position, the top flashlight gives us one nine, 190 lux, it's dropping. Apparently it drops over time, probably because this is heating up like an inferno. Yes, it is. Oh, that pains. So as the LED heats up, because there's no resistor, our light output drops steadily. I wonder if it lasts for a while. We'll have to do a test. Quick, does the other one drop steadily? Look at that. Because there's no resistor, they're just pulling as much as they can, and as they heat up, the light output drops linearly. What an interesting little thing I didn't think about. Right, so when you first power on the flashlight, you get 184 or 180, fine. And when you first turn on the three, oh, this is not accurate because the temperature. Urgh. Top's gonna be 560 is our number and the bottom's gonna be 180. All right, switch out batteries. Luckily, if we don't take too long, the temperature will be about the same, and we're not really cheating too much. Dead batteries gives us O210, um, 300 on the 3, and 118 on the top. And actually, it's not dropping as crazy. So the only other real test I have is to put this back together and run it for a while and see if the LED just dies. I could use the dead batteries to not waste good ones, but that's not the type of person I am. Now here's the real test. Do I want to use the... Well, first I'll put the TVs back in. We'll make this authentic in case this is part of the thermal design. This is not a heat sink, by the way. I'm making sort of a joke. The real question is do we use the triple light? Yeah. If you're camping, you're going to have this on triple for the whole time. Well, not the whole time you need light in your camping room. Tent? Yes, that's what you call them. Good old room camp. <laughs> Graceful. Uh, I was just trying to see if I had the ability to put this back together. I'm starting to doubt myself. <laughs> In theory, you can put it back together. I'm not going to spend that long. So, we're going to set up a little test. What is an intelligent way to measure light output over time? I got the oscilloscope, that's not really the greatest logging tool I have. Uh, could just use the phone and do periodic readings. Hmm. Stand it up. We'll be back. Here is our extremely scientific setup. We've got an LED acting as our <laughs> light sensor. It works, trust me, it does. Hooked up to the oscilloscope. We're on a 1x probe, because why not? Who cares? And we've got this set to the 3 bar one, which is what you'd be using. And we're going to just time lapse this. Uh, I'll keep reading off the numbers occasionally. I could log it, but I didn't. Uh, mm, I don't know how to log in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn off, you know, 
these lights, and I'm also going to turn off the background lights. Uh, the only light that bleeds into here, uh, besides the oscilloscope screen, which is not going to affect this in the slightest, is the actual camping light. Now, if I were smart, I'd set up a temperature sensor, but that's going to take too long, so we're not going to. No, this has already dropped a little bit. That's a lie. I've turned off lights, so I can't trust that. All right. We're starting off at 224 millivolts. And I'm just going to do a time lapse uh, with this exposure locked, and we'll see what happens. But first, I'm going to change my camera to a low bitrate mode, because this is going to kill things. It's been an hour, and... <laughs> it seems to work fine. There's been a 7% change in brightness, or at least total output to the LED here, and that's it. So that's probably just uh, better. They're quite warm, but uh, nothing crazy. Well, actually, I wouldn't even say quite warm. They're just warm. And can I take this apart quickly to see if I can feel it? Oh, I put the pin back in. Too much work. Anyway, the batteries are warm. They'll probably recover quickly because I doubt it took much charge out of them without letting them sit for very long we're at well 1.38 so there's been changed but these will recover probably a good portion of that within not too long so in conclusion this wouldn't ah oh, hold on let's turn that okay ha ah, auto exposure we return in conclusion this, in fact, would work as camping light, I would say. At least it would produce light for a quite long time. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it'll last, um, given certain battery specs and so on and whatever else, but I think it works. So on a on a uh, cheap budget or whatever, this this would work quite fine. And uh, yeah, the, the percent change was very minimal, so it stabilizes pretty quickly. You can watch the, the curve, which we'll have shown at some point. And yeah, so that's been a look at this dollar store camping light. The Camping light. All right, two and one camping light. I guess there's nothing more exciting. Um, all right, nothing exciting on the the back. All right, well, thank you for joining me on this exciting little adventure, and I'll catch you next time.